In this lesson, we will learn how to connect our control rig to follow the source data. Here comes the fun part. This is where we'll actually get to see our control rig be driven by the source skeleton. So we're going to see some movement pretty soon. Let's go ahead and get ready for this. The first thing we'll want to do is show the control rig because that's what will be connected to our mocap skeleton. We'll go ahead and grab the character object and with that selected underneath the display viewport and underneath the viewport drop down let's go ahead and scroll over until we find the visible drop down. Now from here we're going to want to switch this from components to controllers. Alright sweet. Now here's something else we'll want to do. Watch this. If I were to go ahead and grab the hip controller and then try to find it in the object manager. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to view, scroll to first active. You'll notice that it's not going to appear because by default it's hidden. And that's just so that the character object can keep things as clean as possible. Now how do we reveal these controls? Well, all we have to do is go back to the display viewport and then from there underneath managers you'll find the object manager property. Let's go ahead and switch this from components to full hierarchy and it's all the way at the end of this list. Sweet. Now watch this when we go back to that same hip control view scroll to first active there it is. We can access it now. Let's go ahead and start there since we already have it selected. So with it selected it's now time to create a constraint tag. So this is how we'll connect our control rig to the skeleton. So with the hip controller selected we'll go ahead and choose tags. Let me go ahead and tear this off so you can see exactly what I'm choosing here. That'll be character tags constraint. Now super important since the orientation of the skeleton here doesn't quite match with the orientation of our controls. What we can do is simply use maintain original. So watch this. If I go ahead and choose PSR constraint because we want to lock down either position or rotation or both. So this is what we'll use. When we choose this, we'll immediately want to turn on maintain original. Sweet. That way we keep the offset that the control has so it doesn't shift when we constrain it to the joint that will eventually drive it. Now I'll make sure that position and rotation are checked here. And then we'll go ahead and lock down the attributes manager. Now it's time to search for the joint that should drive this control. So if we were to go ahead and scroll up to the top where we find our source skeleton's hierarchy, clearly that's the hip joint, right? If you need to, you could always just go ahead and select it right here from your viewport. But I already know that that's the hip joint that we'll need to assign to the target field. So all we have to do is go ahead and drag and drop. Let's go ahead and add the hip joint to our target field here. And now watch this instantly. You'll notice movement. If I go ahead and start to scrub, there you have it. How cool. Let's go to filter and turn on polygon so we could see this in action. We'll start to scrub. And there you have it. The hips are now being controlled. How cool. Something else to keep in mind is that if you ever wanted to create an offset, you can go ahead and use your offset properties right here underneath the constraint tag. So you can control your pitch axis if you'd like to kind of smooth out the hips a bit more, your bank axis, and your heading axis as well. How exciting. In the next lesson, I'm going to go ahead and show you a way you can actually insert a control so you can access these values a bit faster if you'd like. All right, but that's working out very well. Now, you can see that the center of gravity control isn't quite moving along. I prefer to have it move along so it doesn't move too far away from the rest of the animation. But since we're already controlling rotation here, what we can do is lock down the position of this control by the position of that same hip joint and we'll be good to go. 
So let's go ahead and do that. With the center of gravity control selected, should be named the torso control. I'll go ahead and use scroll to first active to find it. So that's view, scroll to first active. There it is. All right, so with that selected, we can go ahead and add another constraint tag. All right, sweet. So once that has been added, you'll then want to unlock your attributes manager. Let's go ahead and choose the constraint we need. Again, that's PSR. And then let's say we go ahead and lock this down. Once again, once we have these properties loaded in, we'll choose maintain original. We'll uncheck rotation this time. And then we'll go ahead and search for the same hip joint. There it is. So we can now go ahead and left click and drag and add it to the target field. So now when we start to have a look at the animation, you can see the center of gravity is following along and all is well. Cool. So that basically brings us to the upper body control, our chest control here. It's going to work the same way. Let's go ahead and find it. View, scroll to first active. All right. Once we find it, it's time to add the constraint tag. All right. Sweet. So you can see how straightforward this is. And then from there, let's go ahead and unlock the attributes manager. Let's go ahead and choose the type of constraint we need. Again, PSR. Let's turn on maintain original. Let's go ahead and lock down our property page here. We're going to make sure we tie in both position and rotation. So knowing that, it's now time to find the chest bone. So if you would like, you can always select it right here in your viewport. And then choose View, scroll to first active, so you can go ahead and find it. All right, there it is. It's named Spine 1. So let's go ahead and add this object to our target field. Let's go ahead and check and make sure all is well. And there is the chest. How exciting is that? You can see how it's all starting to come together, right? Sweet. All right, so that's, that's really neat how this is all working out. And I can see that there are a few areas that kind of twist just a bit. But again, we can go ahead and fix that with our offset properties. So in the next lesson, what I'd like to do is go ahead and show you how you can set up a, a type of offset control that you can use to quickly correct issues like this.